Welcome back. All right, so the games are done for tonight. This one was on its own, so I figured, yeah, all right, I'll give it its own board. Uh, this was done early because, you know, the, the Hall of Fame inductions were going on and they wanted everybody to watch that, so I, I, I didn't. I, I didn't watch that, so apologies to TSN, but thanks for having the game on early so I could watch the whole thing. All right, starting off, uh, the New York Islanders in against the Ottawa Senators. As I said, this game was on its own. So we'll start with this. Varlama versus Talbot in this one. Mott has a rush chance to deflect out. The Islanders get a power play uh, in the first minute. So that's not ideal. Uh, Nelson's denied. Dobson has a blast that's blocked. Power play's killed off just the one shot that got through. Uh, Sens press at three and a half minutes. Batherson has a wraparound that saved. The Sens press again at five minutes. Varlamov holds. Giroux has a shot that's blocked. It's all sends. Not that the shot clock would tell you that. They weren't getting very much that actually hit the net. So, a lot of zone time. Not a lot of shots on net at that point in the game. Holden has a shot that's tipped out. Pinto fires one wide. The Islanders cleared out. The shots on net are 4-2 to two for the Islanders at 7 minutes. Palmieri has a shot that's saved as the Islanders get some zone time. Batherson can't bury one in close. Pinto gets shaken up. Uh, the Islanders get a second power play. They score on this one. It is Wallstrom from Lee and Barzell at 11.53, and it was a good pass, buried on zone entry, nicely played. Uh, the Islanders then press for another. Hamannick fires one wide on a rush. The Sens press. Uh, some missed shots with five and a half minutes left. They had a lot of shots in this game, but still, it felt like they could have had more. Uh, Parisi has a rush chance kick to side. Kachuk is denied as the Sens press. Branstrom has a shot that's blocked, and then we had a fight between Johnston and Wash and Watson. So, um, pretty decent fight there, and I mean, that's Johnston's job. It's kind of Watson's job, too. So, it's one nothing for the Islanders after one. Second period, Kachuk has a rush chance that's held. The Senators get a power play. Good cycle. Branstrom has a blast that's held. The power play's killed off. It did manage three shots. Uh, Lee couldn't bury one in close. There's a near miss for Kelly on a rush as the game starts to open up. Kachuk fires one wide on a rush himself. Uh, Islanders press at seven and a half minutes. The Islanders go back to the power play. Uh, there's a near miss for Batherson. Kachuk tips one wide. And then we get 34 seconds of five on three. Uh, so, and it's a four minute penalty too. So it's five on three, and then they'll have the rest of that four minute power play. On the five on three, they score. It's Batherson from Stutzla and Giroux at 848. So that makes it 1-1. Joseph's then denied as the power play continues. The first two minutes are down, two, second two are to go. Uh, Stutzla's stick blows up. That leads to a shorthanded rush chance for Pajo, which was saved. Uh, so many almost for Kachuk. I was losing track of how there were so many chances in close. He just couldn't get it. Power plays killed off. And then, as a result of a turnover in their own zone and on a deflection, Dobson scores at 13 15. So, just one of those unfortunate plays for the Sens puts the Islanders ahead 2 to 1. 3 13 left. The Sens get another power play. The Islanders are unhappy with that call. Uh, Kachuk has a deflection, won't go. He's all around the net. Power play's killed off, two shots on that one. So third period, sends 0-5-1, trailing after two coming into this game. Not a great omen for them. Stutz has a net feed this defended. Romanov is denied on a screen point shot. Talbot poke checks Palmieri in a net drive. Sens get a power play. It's Palmieri that goes to the box on that one. And that's their sixth and final power play. There's a shorthanded two-on-one that's defended. There's a near miss for Stutzla. The Islanders clear it out again. That power play is killed off. Sends press after. They had no shots on the power play, though. Uh, Sezikis clears to get a change. The Islanders then get a power play. Dobson has a shot that's blocked, but Pajot scores from Dobson and Barzell at 821. So former Sen uh, Jean-Gabriel Pajot on the board there with a goal. Uh, the Islanders then press for another outside of a post for Batherson on a rush. Uh, Pinto is then denied twice, and Varlamov holds there. Uh, the Sens with some costly missed shots and some just a little bit off passes, but they would get another one. Giroux scores from Kachuk and Stutzla at 13.08. It's on a rush, and it's a fantastic pass by Kachuk. So Kachuk had lots of close chances and almost, and just decided, you know what, I'm just going to pass it over. I'm going to just let him take it. Uh, Hamnick then had a blast and was saved. Talbot holds a Beauvillier rush chance. The Sens press with three minutes left. Varlamov holds. Goalies pulled. Varlamov holds again with Giroux on the doorstep. And then it's an empty net goal for Nelson. Sezikis with the assist at 18.50. The Islanders win this one 4-2. They go to 11-6 this season. For Ottawa, they drop to a frustrating 5-9-1. and 
The shots, 12 to 10 Islanders in the first, 16 to 12 Ottawa in the second, 12 to 11 Ottawa in the third. I think they outplayed the Islanders. They outshoot them 38 to 35. They don't get the result, and that's what DJ Smith was talking about. Power plays the Islanders 2 for 3, Ottawa 1 for 6. Hits were 26 to 15 for, for the Islanders. Varlamov was excellent, 36 saves on 38 shots. Talbot was pretty good as well, 31 saves on 34 shots. But again, for Ottawa, it's another frustrating result. And now I need to change boards just after the first game, too. And on the next board, we got three games. Uh, sh call the uh, Chicago Blackhawks at home against Carolina Hurricanes in this one. Kachetkov playing. Uh, Kachetkov's turning out to be a pretty good goaltender for them. So if Freddie Anderson takes a little bit longer, I, I don't think Canes fans are going to be too upset. Morazic at the other end. Morazic had a good game as well. Early near miss for fast. Uh, Roos then had a point shot that was held. Uh, the Hawks get a power play. Aggressive Canes penalty kill. It's killed off. No shots allowed by Carolina. Canes press. They draw a power play. Nat Natchez was denied. That's killed off. And Martinuk scores from Burns and Stahl at 9.45. It's deflected in. Um, and, and, you know, honestly, not much chance on that one for Mrazek, right? Uh, Thanasiu then has a rush that draws a power play. A shorthanded Natchez break. He fans on that. Uh, doesn't end up getting the shot off. That's The power play's killed off anyways. Mrazek holds with Stastny on the doorstep. Uh, the Canes press with five minutes left. Athanasiu has a shot that's kicked aside. And then at 16.49, Stahl. Uh, makes it 2 nothing. He scores from Burns and Martinuk. Uh, Kurashev is then denied in close before the period's out, but it's 2 nothing. Carolina after one. Second period, Svechnikov's denied. Good back and forth early. The Hawks get a power play. Kachetkov outweights Domi as Domi's trying to go around him and then holds on to the puck. Uh, Burns, he has a shot that's held. Good shorthanded play by the Carolina Hurricanes. They had it in the Chicago end for a while. They do kill that off, and then the Canes get a power play. Aho is denied. The rebound is covered. That power play was killed off as well. Uh, Reese Johnson's robbed in close on a turnover. Kane's press with eight and a half minutes left. Lafferty is denied in close. So again, Kachekov had good saves there. And then Caleb Jones with the turnover and it ends up in the back of his net. It's Svechnikov with his 12th of the year. Uh, fast with the assist at 14.07. That makes it 3 0 for Carolina. The Hawks get a power play. With 4.15 left, there was a post for Domi. Kara was denied. That power play is killed off. With 1.19 left, the Canes get their third power play. So that rolls over into the third period where the Hawks finish the kill. Uh, then there's a press by Carolina at three and a half minutes. Pesci has a blast that's held. Natchez is denied from the side of the net. The shots are 4-2 to two for the Canes at six minutes. And honestly, great road period, and they didn't really give Chicago very much. There's a post for Caleb Jones as the Hawks press. They did have some posts. Uh, Domi then with a rush chance that saved. The Hawks press with three minutes left. Tenorti had a shot that was kicked aside. But in the end, Carolina wins this one. 3 0. They go to 10 5 and 1 with the win. Chicago drops to 6 6 and 3 with the loss. The shots in this one favor Carolina in the first, 13 to 8. Chicago, 11 to 10 in the second, 9 to 8. Carolina in the third. Final shots, 32 to 27 for Carolina. Power plays. Canes 0 for 3, Chicago 0 for 4. The hits, not a lot of them. 11 to 7 in favor of Chicago. Kachetkov, 27 shots for his first career shutout. Mrazek, 29 saves on 32 shots. So overall, uh, Carolina had a pretty good night. And honestly, road teams almost had a perfect night. Almost. So let's move on to where it wasn't a perfect night. But what a crazy game between the LA Kings and the Calgary Flames. I even jumped on the Discord to show pictures of the the game as it was going along. Although it was a new account, so people were like, wait, who's this? Yeah, it was me. So, Quick versus Markstrom in this one. Uh, you see those names and you think, this should be a goalie duel. You would be wrong. Uh, so, the Kings get zone time. They're kept to the outside. Zadorov flattened Arvidsson. He did it again later in the period. I didn't write it on the board again because I thought, yeah, I'm going to remember that. I don't know that he will, but at least he jumped right back up both times. There's a near miss for Dano, and then at 349, Huberto scores. On a nice three-way pass, uh, Anderson and Hannafin with the assists on that one. Nice to see Huberto back in the lineup for one and getting a goal for two. Uh, then the Kings get a power play and they score on it. It's Kaliev uh, from Arvidsson and Dursey at 4.53. Nice cycle, great pass by Arvidsson and a one-timer into the back of the net. And then at 6.11, Kaliev scores from Lazat. So that's two goals for Kaliev in a minute and 15 seconds approximately. So that's pretty good night's work. Uh, and that one banked in. So sometimes it's better to be lucky than good, too. Flames guilty of scrambling in their own zone at this point. Then there's a near miss for Hannafin. The Flames press at nine minutes. Eventually, they tie the game. It's Majapani. If he heats up, Calgary's in good shape. 
Lucic and Kadri with the assist of 10.55. The Kings try to answer. However, uh, Edler turns it over, and on what's only their seventh shot of the game, they get their third goal. It's Richie from Coleman at 11.37. The Kings press with four and a half minutes left, but the Flames would score again to extend the lead. It's to Foley from Lindholm and Ruzicka at 16.25. It was blasted on a two-on-one. It's only the ninth shot. I don't know how many of those four goals quick could have been expected to save. So we're going to the second period. The Flames get an early power play, and Lindholm scores on that from Toffoli and Kadri at 151. That's the 11th shot of the game. Five of them have gone into the net. Again, no signs of Quick coming out. Peterson's going to play the next game, I'm guessing. And so, yeah, Quick was in the net for the night. But the Kings are having turnover issues that are leading to these goals, too. And leading to other opportunities for Calgary. So while the save percentage is ugly for Quick... I don't know how many of those he's supposed to save. Uh, delay a game. The Flames get a power play. Toffoli's denied as it comes to an end, so they did kill off that power play. Dursey has a screenshot save. The Flames rush, but at 14-26, uh, Kings make it interesting. Fiala scores from Edler and Kupari. Backhanded it in. It was bounced off the boards by Edler. I don't know if he meant to, but it looked like a nice bank off the boards to Fiala, so sure, we'll give him credit for that. Might have learned that from the Sedins. And then Ruzicka restores that wide lead uh, from Toffoli and uh, uh, Lindholm at 16:36. It was a turnover. It was tipped in, and it was very quick. So it was basically LA would commit the turnover, and the Flames would make them pay right away. So it's six to three after two periods in favor of Calgary. Third period, quick still in. I thought that was notable. Uh, Lindholm's tonight as the Flames press. We get two minutes of four on four. Uh, Anderson has a shot that saved, but then Kopitar scores from Doughty. And Walker at 8.57 is posting in. It was a really nice pass by Doughty, which Kempe could have touched and did not. Uh, the Kings get a power play. That's killed off. Uyghur exited hurt. He would come back. Uh, with 1.44 left, the Kings get a power play. They make it a 6 on 4. And I know Uyghur came back because the puck went in off of him when LA made it interesting. Uh, it's Kempe from Doughty and Fiala at 18.41. So, yeah, Uyghur comes back and the puck goes in off him there. And so that makes it 6-5. to five. Kopitar was then robbed with 21 seconds left. But in the end, the Flames do hold on. They win 6-5. to five. They go to 7-6-2 and two with the much-needed victory. The Kings drop to 10-7-1 and one with the loss. The shots in this one, 13-9 LA in the first. 17-4 Calgary in the second. 12-3 LA in the third. Final shots were 29 each. So as wildly crazy as those shots are, they evened up at the end of the night. Both teams were 1-2 for two on the power play. Hits 24 to 22 in favor of the Kings. Quick saved 23 out of 29. Markstrom saved 24 out of 29. So not a goalie's duel. Not at all. Both goalies had some nice saves in this game, but there were still, there were 11 goals out of the 58 shots. So both coaches are going to have a lot to work on. But at least one of them got a victory, which would make it feel a little bit better. That's Daryl Sutter. He still won't be happy. All right, last one of the night. St. Louis in against the Colorado Avalanche. The Blues are so hard to figure. So that eight-game losing streak, uh, there were some games where they, they barely lost, but there were some they just looked bad, and now they seem to be back. So it's Bennington versus Georgiev. Confer has a net feed, near miss on that one. Uh, Tarasenko had a wraparound chance that was defended, did not get to the net. Uh, Letty has a shot that's held as the Blues press. The Avs would get a power play. Nice aggressive penalty kill by the Blues there, though. Uh, McKinnon has a shot that's held. That's killed off. The Avs press at seven minutes. Lekkonen had a rush chance. That was held. There was a near miss on a rush for Alexandrov. Uh, then we have the abs press with six and a half minutes left. Rodriguez has a blast that's held. Bennington looked really sharp tonight. Right out of the gate, you could tell he was having one of the best games of, of, of the season so far. Abs get another power play. That was killed off. Uh, Blues press with three minutes left, but it's scoreless after one. We're going to the second period. McKinnon can't bury one in close. Pareko had a net drive. That was held. Uh, Johnson had a rush chance held. Uh, then we get a power play for St. Louis. The abs don't let them set up. There was a shorthanded rush. Cout has a shot that was saved. That's killed off. Uh, Saad with a rush chance. That's defended. But then Colorado opens the scoring. It's Rantanen. He scores from McKinnon and McCarr at 11 11.29. So, I mean, you save so many, but eventually Colorado's going to break through. And yeah, they're probably going to win the game, right? Well, let's keep going. Uh, Blues press with seven minutes left. Tarasenko has a blast that's saved. And then Thomas. Bit of a fluky goal for Thomas, but he'll say he planned it that way. Scores from Butchnevich and Tarasenko at 13.49. 
The Avs then pressed to try to restore the lead with five minutes left. Shen had a chance that was saved. Achari with a rush chance saved as well. And then it's Brandon Saad scoring from O'Reilly at 18.59. And then with two seconds left in the period, the Blues get a power play. So that rolls over into the third. Be a good time to get an insurance goal, and they get it. So something they weren't getting during that eight-game losing streak they got tonight. It's Cairo on the power play from Thomas and Butchnevich at 13 seconds. Uh, the Avs then get a power play. Rodriguez loses it. It's cleared, but then on his own entry rush, Lekkonen brings them within a goal again from Ranton and a Makar at 3.02. Blues would try to answer. Uh, Johnson has a rush chance. That's held. Levo's denied and close. There was a post for Shen as the Blues pressed. So a post away from a two-goal lead again. McKinnon fires one high in a rush. And then the craziness starts. So with 2.01 left, the Avs get a power play. Now, giving the Avs a power play at home with how lethal their power play has been this year, kind of crazy. But what makes it crazier is, with a delay of game call, it becomes a 5-on-3 with 1.44 left. Uh, Makar was denied. We get some pushing after that. They pulled the goaltender to make it a 6-on-3. Couldn't score. Couldn't do it. There were two Avs on the ice for every member of the Blues. They could not score. Uh, the Blues almost had an empty netter, too. So your final score is 3-2. to two. The Blues go to 6-8 and eight with the win. For the Avs, they drop to 8-5-1 and one with the loss. Your shots in this one, 17-11 Colorado in the first, 15-12 St. Louis in the second, 17-13 Colorado in the third. The final shots, 46-39 for Colorado. Power plays, St. Louis 1 for 2. Colorado 1 for 5. The hits, 17-16 Colorado. Bennington saves 44 out of 46. Georgiev saves 36 out of 39. And both goaltenders played very well, but Bennington, best game he's played all season. I really think that. One of one of the highest shot, uh, shot save totals he's had in his career as well. So kudos to him for that, and kudos for the Blues for pulling themselves off the mat and uh, getting a winning streak going. They're up to three. So it's just a streak one way, streak the other, and now it looks like they're ready to win, what, 12 in a row to get themselves back into the playoff picture and and then we can talk about how good the Blues are in a video too. There you go. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through you just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.